Hello, all my Gemini friends. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Terry Hunter. I am an intuitive astrologer, angel therapy practitioner, Reiki master, and empowerment coach. And I'm here with your Gemini August 2021 Heavenly Horoscopes. So what I'm going to do here is talk about some of the transits, specifically for Gemini rising moon, sun, and stelliums. I base my um, astrology on Western whole sign astrology, as I was taught. So um, I'm going to talk about the um, August, as I said, the Oz, August transits. And then I'm going to do um, an angel reading for you um, at the end to get spirits advice for how to traverse these transits. So Gemini, what is going on? The big thing that's going on is Jupiter moving back into Aquarius. Jupiter went retrograde a couple of weeks ago and has just left Pisces and moved into Aquarius, which is your ninth house. The ninth house is the house of long distance journeys, of laws and principles, of higher education, of the connection to the angelic realm. Uh, the ninth house naturally rules these existential questions like, who am I? What is the meaning of life? What is my value? So as Jupiter goes retrograde in your house, a ninth house um, of Aquarius. Aquarius is going to say, um, ask you to innovate. Aquarius is, um, Aquarius wants to stand out a bit. It's a, it's a sign of being unique. It's a sign of, of individual thought and of unexpected changes. You know, Uranus is sort of uh, expect the unexpected. So when we see this coming into your house of long distance journeys of higher education, what we may see is you revisiting some of your beliefs and some of your, um, your thoughts about where it is that you are where are you putting yourself out in the world? It's this combination, Aquarius in the rules the 11th house naturally, which is of friends, hopes, dreams, and of networks, social networks, such as YouTube and Instagram and uh, TikTok and Twitter. So here you may be looking at, as Jupiter goes through your ninth house backwards, you may say, do I like what I'm putting out on the internet? Do I like... Uh, do I really believe what it is that I'm, I'm, the actions that I'm taking? And do these actions um, present opportunities that I, I get to revisit? Retrogrades are always about revisiting something. So you may find yourself revisiting travel, getting to go to places that, you know, you had planned on going to before. You may find yourself revisiting the idea of higher education to support your hopes and dreams moving forward. And on some level, I think uh, even though the ninth house is not necessarily related to friends, I do think that there is an opportunity that you may look at, you know, Gemini may start to think to themselves, Am I surrounding myself with, with networks of people that are supporting the vision of what I want to move forward? That's the way I'm looking at it. So um, this is a big theme. Uh, both Jupiter, the planet of expansion, the planet of wealth, the planet of good tidings and good luck, the planet sometimes of overconfidence, uh, the planet of excess at some times. It is um, also in Aquarius with Saturn. And Saturn, many people will talk about Saturn being restrictive and limiting and depressing and enduring. It rules old age and stone and dry things like saltine crackers without a drink. Um, but I, it also rules fatherhood. So I've been kind of thinking of Saturn as evolved into this loving father, you know, this father that might be able to see things I can't see. So Gemini, as Jupiter moves into Aquarius deeper and Saturn is traversing, they're, they're far apart from each other, but they're still in the same house having a remote conversation with each other. And I think what it's going to do is make Gemini think about 
the structure of your life and starting to revamp that structure to support some new beliefs that you have about the principles of your life, the laws you have lived by, um, the laws of society, potentially, uh, the ninth house rules, the judicial, judicial system, judges and priests. So you may revisit some ideas you have about your religious beliefs and they may evolve. Um, these dynamics are going to be in play until October. And then the, these two planets, including Pluto, but Saturn and Jupiter are going to start to move forward again through Aquarius. So what we're seeing is this, they moved through Aquarius, Jupiter got into Pisces, then the retrograde is a revisit of some principles, revisit of some ideas, revisit of networks and of structures in order to renovate them. So that when the planets move forward, you're more aligned to the path that you want to um, move forward for your future. Um, let's go through some of the other transits that are going on. On August 1st, we have the Sun and Mercury in Leo opposing Saturn in Aquarius. And Mars will move into Virgo and it will be opposing Jupiter. Um, in Aquarius. So we have the sun, our ego identity, how we put ourselves out into the world, and Mercury, your ruling planet, which rules thinking, speaking, writing, teaching, our everyday activities in opposition to Saturn's structure in the sign of revolution, in the sign of individuality, in the sign of uniqueness, so this is, again, kind of playing to this revisiting idea of Jupiter and your beliefs. And Mars moving into Virgo is going to make you want to take action in that respect and to really look at, is the work I'm doing, is how I'm serving others, um, is my health standing in alignment with what I want moving forward? On um, the 8th of August, we have a new moon in Leo. And the new moon is always when the moon is darkest. It's where we plant our seeds and we go with faith into the dark of the night as we nurture those seeds for their culmination at the full moon. So this is a good time. Leo represents my personal creativity. It represents fun, entertainment, hobbies, uh, sporting events in some ways. It represents um, children. So you have an opportunity to really set some intentions for what you want to experience moving forward. We have um, a, uh, the next day on the 9th, we have Venus in Virgo in opposition to Neptune in Pisces. So there may be a bit of murky information, um, murky feelings, you may feel slightly unsure of your value to another person, uh, Venus ruling love and femininity and uh, value in opposition to Neptune, which is kind of looking at things underwater and can sometimes represent a bit of deception. And Neptune being in Pisces, um, it's the house of sleep. It's the house behind the house of self. So we don't really see it. It's sort of what's behind us. So that's a few day influence that you're going to want to kind of really be mindful not to take any immediate action, but give yourself an opportunity to process and percolate before you move forward. We have on the 16th, I believe it is, we have an exact, the week of the 16th and on the 18th, I believe it is an exact um conjunction between Mars and Mercury. Mercury, again, is your ruling planet, and um, it rules thought, spoken word, written word, read word, meaning what I read. And it's in the sixth house with Mars, the planet of uh, assertiveness, aggression, war. And so there may be a bit of tense conversations that go on during this time. They're going to be doing this dance together till the month's end. So work environment may feel a little stressful. Um, and again, this is just fleshing out, giving you a, a greater opportunity to be more authentic, moving your path forward. 
we have Venus moving into Libra on the 17th, which will soften everything a little bit for me. Venus rules Libra. Venus loves to create comfort and to create luxury and to create a feeling of welcome, homeness, harmony. So that's going to feel good. We have on the 21st, Uranus, the planet of revolution and unexpected events, the, the planet that says, I am an individual, I want to stand out in the world, is going to be in a trine to Mars in Virgo. So this may be, this is a couple day influence where you may say, I really want to be seen as the individual that I am in my work environment or within my work. I want my voice to count. I want my thoughts to be acknowledged. The trine is a very positive influence. It's a harmonious influence. But again, we have the planet of aggression and war and the planet of unexpected lightning and explosions having this harmonious conversation. So I don't know how, how harmonious it'll be, but it will offer some liberation. And what Gemini gets to do is put their spin on it so they communicate effectively and not from some sort of knee-jerk reaction. Um, finally, on the 22nd, 23rd, depending where you are in the world, we'll be going into Virgo season. And on the 24th or the 25th, we'll see Mercury in Virgo opposing Neptune. Did I just say that? No. I was opposing Venus. This is where conversation may get murky. Or there is the potential that you'll find some deceptive information or information. It kind of feels to me these are um, the information I might, might find out is information that was left out and it might have been left out on purpose because uh, people might not have thought you would react well to it. Again, this is an opportunity for you to go out of your head, out of Mercury in your mind, and letting a little bit of your intuition take over in how you respond to this. Because Neptune will ask us to be egoless, but it is not about being egoless to, to acquiesce our ego to another party as much as we get to be egoless in really caring whether the other party agrees with us if we are in alignment with our deeper truth. That's what, how it comes across to me. And then finally, Mercury will move into Libra, joining Venus. And that will make for some very fun and sweet conversations um, at month's end. So now let's go on to our Gemini and see what the reading is for this month. All right. For my Geminis, the main theme is the snake shed an old skin and allow for that old skin to bring a balancing in, to bring something new and exciting in. Because when we shed a skin, we are not releasing the whole snake. We're just refreshed and renewed. In our foundational position, uh, I believe for my Geminis, this may have something to do with shedding an old skin in relation to how you view love and how you view your relationships because it's time to release the burden that you have accumulated through your experiences. In the opportunity, the obstacle, spirit is saying that their relationship will come, but it will come as a result of you being able to shed a skin and realizing that the relationships that came before were only there to help you define more clearly the relationship you want to experience. In the angel's advice, we have Merlina, I'm sorry, Merlin and Rosetta. Merlin represents karma, justice, balance, and alchemy. And normally I, I think of this as the inner child. And I, this is today is no exception. While some of you may want to become parents or teachers or uh, guide younger people, I believe having Rosetta in the angel's advice is asking you to have a childlike innocence and trust in spirit to make everything work out all right. So what appears initially as a burden is somehow reconciled as a result of my spiritual journey, my spiritual um, exploration in seeing a bigger picture of what the burden has been doing, which might be protecting you from connecting with someone. You're the son of the twins, Gemini. So you could inadvertently connect with somebody who doesn't actually serve your greatest good. So this is where Saturn may have been a little interruptive to you. Now we have 
the opportunity for a rebirth and the idea that you're being protected from all types of harm. And this rebirth really feels like it's much more about how you're processing your belief in romance versus a relationship coming in right now. With Jupiter transiting your ninth house of beliefs, and with spirit saying this is going to be focused on love, this is an opportunity for you as a Gemini to see that your youthful energy, your willingness to explore things, um, you know, you, you're a very busy sign. You know, Mercury loves to zip around the zodiac and visit all the houses and party and hi, how's everybody doing? And so with this, um, energy, you're better able to define which houses resonate with you. Where where do you want to live? Where do you want your mind to grow? Because where you are planted is where you will grow. Okay, that's it for August. This is your Heavenly Horoscopes. Again, my name is Terry Hunter. And if you'd like to book a reading with me, my information is in the description below. And I'll be back next month with more of your heavenly horoscopes. I hope you enjoyed this. Please like, comment, share, and subscribe. Subscribe. Thank you. See you next month, everybody.